so in this Star Trek Attack Wing unboxing, we're going to be going over the Vulcan ship Dekir? Dekir? We'll call it Dekir. How's that sound? Okay, so here have the contents of the Vulcan ship. First is the ship itself. And it's actually not too bad. It's got a pretty decent paint job on it. You can see the, uh, you probably won't be able to see it on the video, but inside the circle here, you got some nice blue paint, which is done actually pretty well. Um, just have a weird kind of gloss finish on it, which is I haven't seen before on other uh, Attack Wing ships. Well, that's kind of interesting, but yeah, this is a, definitely a kind of cool little um, spaceship. I think it looks, it's, I think it looks pretty good, for sure. A decent paint job. Casting looks really good. There's no like major mold lines. Yeah, some very various colors. So yeah, that's actually a really really nice paint job on it compared to some of the other ships I've seen from, uh, from Attack Wing. Let's take a look at the cards. So the first one we have is the Elite Talent Vulcan High Command. Add two upgrade slots to your upgrade bar. The additional upgrade slots may be either crew or tech. This upgrade may only be purchased for a Vulcan captain on a Vulcan ship. If the Vulcan the captain card is ever removed from your ship, discard this upgrade and then discard upgrades from your ship one at a time until your upgrades are supported by a ship's upgrade bar. So... That's five points, and of course you could lose your upgrades if you lose your captain, say if it gets assimilated or something. So that's kind of a risky card, especially for the price. Um, so wall. So four points, seven skill captain. Target a ship within range one to two. Remove one scan or battle station token from beside that target ship and place an auxiliary power token beside your ship. Well, that could be really handy to force someone to discard their battle stations token. The battle stations are actually pretty good pretty good thing to have so yeah that's pretty impressive not that amount of bad ability at all first of all and uh, if you watch the uh, prelude to an XR um, videos it's nice to have the same actor playing so well that's kind of cool um, auxiliary control room three point tech upgrade at any point you may disable this card to remove one auxiliary power token from beside your ship again that's not too bad you got a disable not a discard it's only three points get rid of that uh, a pesky auxiliary power token that's that's not a bad card at all Kavik add one crew slot to your upgrade bar two points three skill interesting another tech upgrade sensor grid action discard this card to target one other friendly ship within range to three of your ship place a scan token and an auxiliary power token beside your ship and the target ship. If you do show, if you do so, every cloaked enemy ship that is within range one to two of your ship must immediately flip its cloak token over to the red side. So this is another way to decloak, to forcibly decloak uh, cloak ships, um, similar to uh, data. That's actually kind of interesting. And it's a five point tech upgrade. You do have to, it's only a discard, it is an action and, and a discard, and it does require uh, getting an auxiliary power token on two ships, but you also get scan tokens on two ships. It's not a free action, so, so you just get a scan token no matter what. And of course, then again, you still can't target lock the same turn, but they, you force them to decloak, but um, I really don't think, uh, so there's no restrictions on it, so that's not a bad little card. Um, I think it's better than data because you can put it on any, just about anything. Uh, even though I don't think cloak ships are really the threat right now. It's all Borg. Uh, generic captain. Uh, F particle beam. Attack. Disable this card to perform this attack. You may only fire this weapon from your rear firing arc. That's uh, three attack. Range one to three for a whole whopping one point. One point? This, I like this card. I really do. For the price. One point? Heck, I'd put that on all my uh, Bird of Preys. Sure, it's only three attack, but it's range one to three. It's a secondary weapon, so they don't get the bandless um, uh, dice at range three. And uh, gives you a rear, basically adds a rear weapon for almost no points. I mean, two points on a Klingon ship? I mean, this is really cheap. Doesn't require a target lock, and it's just, I mean, it's a really cheap secondary weapon that fires a rear. I like it. 
I really like it. I could definitely see if I got a couple points left over in the build to put this on the on a Otter Bird of Prey really easily. Okay, Dekir, Dekir class. Whenever you initiate an attack against an enemy at ship at range 3, gain plus 1 attack die. So it's 3, 1, 5, 4, 26 points. So it's got a lot of hull, it's got a lot of shields, and not a lot of attack. So in that way, it's very similar to an Excelsior type ship. It's got a lot, it's got a lot of durability at 4 shields and 5 hull, and only 3 attack. So it's definitely going to need the benefit of additional weapons. With 2 tech, a weapon, and a crew slot. So this is obviously the bigger of the Vulcan ships. So there's three Vulcan ships out now, and this is the bigger of the two. The other one doesn't have the uh, same stats. The Surat class, I think, is what they are. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, that's a lot of that's a lot of ship, for sure. So this is gonna definitely be a competitive um, ship with all the fun stuff you can do with it. That's pretty cool. Definitely give it something to boost up its effectiveness a little bit. And, uh, yeah, not bad stats at all. Not bad stats at all. So, with two tech slots, you can definitely give it something. That'll make it useful. Muroc. Crew shot. Crew card. Discard this card to target a ship at range 1 to 2 and roll 2 to act dice. For every hit and crit, yeah. disable one active shield on the target ship. If the target ship is cloaked, a hit result instead flips that ship's cloak token over to its red side. And another anti-cloaking ship. Um, anti-cloaking card. Uh, again, I don't think cloak is really the threat it used to be uh, with the Borg, but um, you still, if you play against a lot of cloak stuff, uh, it's not too bad. Um, four point discard and action. Eh. Yeah, I think it's kind of expensive for what it does. I'm not quite sure. Interesting card, though, for sure. Okay, here's your main weapon, Photonic Weapon. Attack target lock, spend your target lock and disable this card to perform this attack. You may re-roll one of your blank results, and you may fire this from forward or rear firing arcs. Uh, four attack, range two to three, so it's basically like a, a mini Photon Torpedo in mean, the days before there were Photon Torpedoes. So it's roughly equivalent to a three point Photon with four damage. It's virtually identical. So yeah, that's not uh, pretty usual weapons, and a fire from forward or rear firing arcs. Pretty pretty standard secondary weapon. And Vulcan Starship, here's the generic class. Let's see here. Let's see, T'Pol. Here's T'Pol. When defending, if you have a scan token beside your ship, you may spend that token to reroll up to two of your defense dice. Hmm. It's not a bad little card. Kind of spindy. And of course, it would be nice if you had two defense dice, which most ships actually don't. So unless you got something to boost your defense, um, so she's only going to have limited uh, usefulness. But it would be something like on a cloak ship or something with a lot of extra defense dice for free. Like uh, if you're using it with Sulu or something like that, you have lots of extra defense dice. Rerolling defense dice uh, is not a bad deal. Only three points, not a bad card. So we have the maneuver card chart from the ship. Uh, and it's got a one backwards, but both sharp turns are red. So that case is kind of similar to, let's say, like a Keldon class or something like that. Um, that one backwards is kind of interesting, that's for sure. There's a maneuver chart, not that maneuverable. Uh, additional rules, faction Vulcan, and this tells you where the Vulcan faction is in the initiative, which is near the bottom. It goes after Ferengi and before Independence, so that's just kind of adding this to the do the uh, faction list in the rule book. And the mission. It is rendezvous. You guys are supposed to retrieve a Falcon crew from from a Federation ship. Anyway, so yeah, there's the contents of the Vulcan ship to cure. Very interesting faction. Um, there are currently one. There's currently one other Vulcan ship out, which is uh, the OP one, the Bo the Borg uh, um, 
collective OP-1 uh, Surat class ship, and then the other Surat class ship is coming out in the next wave. So there'll be three unique Vulcan ships here real soon. And, and they don't have a lot of damage, but they have a lot of hull and shields on them. So they're pretty, pretty tough ships as far as uh, sticking around for a while. So that's it for this uh, Star Trek Attack Wing unboxing. I'll talk to you guys later. So one thing I forgot to go over was the tokens. Most of the tokens, there's nothing exciting in here. There's the mission tokens you need and stuff like that. Uh, but I didn't want to talk about the ship's uh, firing arcs. And you can see here, it's got both a rear firing arc and a 180 degree front firing arc. So that's a lot of coverage, especially if you've got a secondary torpedo weapon, something that can hit pretty good. Say like a clung torpedo or a, or a photon torpedo, something you can actually shoot out of it. Um, from everywhere, and that's a lot of coverage. There's no doubt about that. Um, a lot of hull, a lot of shields, a lot of coverage um, for your weapons uh, arcs. I mean, that's really nice. Both a 180 and a rear. That's pretty amazing. There's not a whole lot of ships that have that kind of coverage. Um, so I just want to add that little addendum onto the video. I'll talk to you guys later.